why I'm triple captain in Haaland and who to replace Trent with. Welcome to the Gianni Batici YouTube show. Hope you guys are well. Game week 25 sees four teams doubling. That's big news. Brentford, Luton, but Man City and Liverpool too. How many doublers is the optimal amount for game week 25? And what do we do with a couple of headaches? Trent Alexander-Arnold, Ollie Watkins, chip strategy. We'll talk about that in today's video. But first, a very quick review of how I got on last time round. It was a good green arrow. Um, fairly happy with that. 87 points. I took a four point hit. Uh, Bell came in as an enabler. It enabled Captain Harland. Very happy with that rank of around 105k. We got to be fairly happy. But this week, how am I set? Well, before we talk about my team specifically, let's address a couple of dilemmas, shall we? First and foremost, Trent Alexander-Arnold. He's going to be out for a fair few weeks. He's definitely missing the double game week, the EFL Cup final. How do we feel about Connor Bradley coming into our teams? Now, look, we've seen Connor Bradley only twice in the Premier League. He notched an eight-pointer and a 21-pointer. When we look at Bradley's average position maps, that's so, so good, right? This guy is high and wide when he plays. This is like Trent as a kid. When Trent first came into the team, he was bombing forward always wide. As years have gone, gone on, Trent has moved into more of a playmaker, central, inverted fullback. But this is an out-and-out -out fullback, sky-high, goal threat, assist threat. Now, Bradley plays Brentford away, and who all play with wing-backs. So again, there might be space in behind for Bradley, um, in behind the left centre-back. Um, and then they play Luton at home. Big upside. I think if you're selling Trent this game week, well, you are selling Trent if you own him, Bradley's a really, really good buy. Um... Someone I'm looking at this week, another defender I'm looking at is Dowerty. Again, sky high against Sheffield United. I don't know how he walked away with one point. I think he I think he like had nine successful crosses or nine big chance or nine chances created. Um one point, but the most advanced man on the pitch. Again, if you look at the average position, the most advanced player for Luton. I see Bradley as Dowerty as two of the the picks. And if you're selling Trent, or even if you're not selling Trent, these two defenders should be on your wish list. The problem is, is both Luton and Liverpool do not play in game week 27. So what headaches does it cause further along the line? We'll talk about Ollie Watkins and triple captain Haaland in a bit. But first, let's show my team and how I'm set. This is the team selection video. And guys, if you fancy hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel, if you're new around here, do click that subscribe button. Uh, thank you as always for the support and shout out to Fantasy Football Scout as well. All the data in today's video is from Fantasy Football Scout and there's a link in the description. So, Dubravka in goal. It's about time he starts keeping a clean sheet or two. I wonder if Newcastle can return to early season Newcastle, which saw loads of clean sheets. Um, Newcastle at home to Bournemouth, six months ago, you'd go, yeah, good clean sheet fixture that. Not anymore. Can he do it this time round? I'm hoping so. And one of the reasons why I'm not looking at Kaminsky one, I've not got enough money. The Luton goalkeeper will get save points aplenty. He's got a double in 28 as well. Is because I'm hopeful Dubravka and Newcastle can turn it round. And Bournemouth have been a bit shot shy of late. So Ariola will be benched. My starting defenders at the moment, Gabriel is locked in. Like the goal threat that Gabriel gives. Burnley concede a ton of chances from set pieces. I think they're ranked 20th for chances conceded on set pieces. Let's wonder if Gabriel and Saliba can score headers again. Declan Rice's delivery, by the way on point, or it certainly was against West Ham. Um, Pedro Porro is in there. He's been rubbish of late. We don't expect Spurs to keep clean sheets, but Porro's in there for attacking returns. And again, he's looked shot shy of late. I'm a little bit worried about Porro. And now I do have a little bit of a benching dilemma at the back. At the moment, I'm starting a Stupinam too. He's returned to playing in a back four. He was very advanced last time out in in, an, in a normal pattern for Brighton. That's kind of what you expect. Back four, left back, a stupid hand bombing forward. Unfortunately, for a few weeks before last time out, he was playing left centre back. He wasn't getting forward. A stupid hand against Sheffield United on paper is a good one. This means I'm benching Luton's bell. Unlike Dowerty, he doesn't offer huge upside or any upside. Did pick up a couple of bonus points last week. Um, even with two fixtures, I don't really back Bell to get a clean sheet. So I could potentially chuck Bell in instead of Estupanan or Porro. And that is a decision I need to make. I'm not worried too much about it though. Um, the midfield four, De Bruyne and Foden ready for the double game week with Jota and Saka. Lovely. Harlem, Watkins and Darwin. So I go into a double game week with triple Man City attack. 
I go into a double game week with double Liverpool attack. The big question here is, do I sell a defender to bring in either Bradley or to bring in Doughty? And I like them both very much. Now, with regret, I can't sell Taylor. I've got 0.0 in the bank. If I sell Taylor, I get 3.9. Bradley's 4.1, Doughty's 4.6. I would need to sell an Estupanan or a Porro. The problem I've got with both of these guys is, well, Estupanan has a good fixture in game week 26, home to Everton. Uh, that's a blank game week where we're going to need all, all our players. And Porro, well, he plays in game week 29. And if you're not free hitting in 29, you've got to work towards it. And you don't really want to be selling players that you know of a game in 29. The likes of Fulham and Burnley and Spurs and Villa. These are all 100% playing in game week 29. Big decisions to make. Big, big, big decisions to make there. I think as things stand, I'm looking to roll the transfer though. And that's simply because if I roll this week, not only am I not bringing in a player then that doesn't play in 26, like Doughty or Bradley, which will cause me a headache in 26. I'll have six players then not playing. I'll have, let's say I bring in Bradley or Doughty, I'll have him alongside Bell, alongside Palmer, um, alongside uh, the Liverpool lads, five or six players, oh, and Porro, that won't be playing. So if six players aren't playing and I only have one free transfer in 26, I'm looking at fielding like eight, nine men. Um, and I'm going to need hits. As things stand, if I roll the transfer this week, I get a 11 that I'm happy with this week. I have to deal with a bit of FOMO on Doughty or Bradley. But then next week, how many players do I have not playing? Well, only five, not six. And I have two free transfers. So two of those five, let's say Darwin and Jota, well, they can move on. And then I've got an 11 without hits. Puts me in a pretty strong position, that, doesn't it? So I think that's where I'm at, guys. I'm going to very likely be rolling the transfer this week, even with the Trent Alexander-Arnold news. I did think if we don't hear about Trent and it's touch and go, I'll be tempted on Bradley. Now we know Trent's out, maybe I should be going big on Bradley. But I just wonder... I just wonder if it's worth it knowing he doesn't have a fixture in 26 and he's also unlikely to play again in game week 30. So that's where I'm at in terms of my transfers. As I mentioned, which one to bench of Bell, Estupanan and Porro? Neither here nor there. As things stand, it's Bell benched. Palmer also on the bench this week. Guys, many benched Palmer last time out. Big, big points uh, came up late against, um, against Crystal Palace, didn't he? With those two late assists, which got him the bonus points. I like holding Palmer long term. At the moment for my team, it gives me that bench option when he has a bad fixture. But he's got the likes of Brentford coming up soon. And that's a game I see big returns for him yet again. Um, and Taylor is also on my bench. Of course, Taylor is back training and he does have a fixture in 26. So another reason, I guess, to keep hold of him. Triple captaincy is big this week. And I'm going to give you so many reasons why Haaland is a no-brainer. But first... We're talking about selling Trent, obviously, because he's injured. But many out there this week are looking to sell someone I'm starting and that I've got quite happily in my team, and that is Ollie Watkins. We have to address this because he's been such a popular sell. Loads are getting rid of Ollie Watkins. In fact, I think he's currently the second most transferred out player this game week. I think Solanke is first, just behind him. Watkins is second. But how does he rank amongst forwards in the last four game weeks? Well, when we rank them in the last four game weeks, in terms of expected goal involvement, Darwin is top. Watkins is second. Tony third. Alvarez Hoyland, Adebayo complete the top six with Calvert-Lewin and Ogbené there as well. So these are the best eight performing players in terms of non-penalty non goal involvement um, expected. In the last four games. Now Watkins did come up big against Sheffield United a few games ago. And he got three assists and a goal in that game. So his numbers are inflated by that one performance. But he still looked alright. He still looked pretty sharp. And Aston Villa, despite losing games, are still a good team. Can they go to Fulham and score goals? Yes, they can. Absolutely. I've got no doubt about it. Would I prefer Darwin this week to Watkins? Yes. I would. Would I prefer Tony to Watkins this week? Yes. Would I be willing to sell him and then bring him back using two valuable transfers just for one week? Effectively, eight points of hits if you're having to put out other fires and these transfers equate to hits. Would I sell Watkins to Darwin and back? Watkins to Tony and back? Eight point hit. Will Watkins, will Darwin and Tony outscore Watkins by eight points? 
in one game week? No, I like very unlikely. So no, I wouldn't be making that move. For one free transfer, I would, yeah, sure. I'd go with Tony and I'd go with Darwin. I'd rank Darwin as number one. If I was wildcarding, absolutely Darwin number one. But as things stand, for many, I think we probably can stay a little bit more patient. Do remember, come game week 29, if you're not free hitting, Watkins will be probably the most popular captain that game week. Unless we get some cup upsets and bigger teams dropping in, we'll all be captain in an Aston Villa or a Spurs player that week, as things stand. The game week 29 fixtures aren't looking pretty. At the moment, there's only four, three, four confirmed fixtures. Um, so look, that's where I'm at in terms of Ollie Watkins. I'm glad I don't have the headache of Trent. What about De Bruyne this week? Should we be beelining for De Bruyne if we don't have him? It's difficult for me to say as an owner, but I look at players like De Bruyne, Jota and Darwin, and clearly these players now aren't safe for 90 minutes, right? Not absolutely every game. In the double, do Jota, Darwin and De Bruyne get 180 minutes? I'd be very surprised. If they get 120 though, two lots of 60 or a 90 and a 30, are you happy? Absolutely you are. 120 minutes of Jota, Darwin and De Bruyne are better than 180 minutes of most players. Therefore, especially with these fixtures, you just take it. You just take it. Now, look, Man City are playing, I think, on Saturday and Liverpool are playing Saturday in the early kickoff. We will almost certainly get leaks around Man City. Um, certainly around Liverpool, I should add. Um, we might even hear that Mo Salah's starting. And if we hear Mo Salah starting, do... How are you going to react to that news? If you're going to react to that news and go, oh my God, I need to bring him into my team, make sure you've got a plan before 10.55 of how you're bringing him in. For me, if I hear Mo Salah starting, changes nothing. Changes nothing. I'm happy with my Liverpool men. If I hear Jota or Darwin are benched, I still don't think it changes anything because I think it probably increases their chance of playing the Luton game, which is the big, the big, the big ticket item in this double game week for Liverpool. So off the back of potential leaks, have plans of action. I'm going to be on Sky Sports News until 10.56 or 57. Pretty nerve-wracking, knowing I'll have two, three minutes to react. But honestly, I don't think it will change anything. Like, the Salah news won't affect me. Um, my team is not built to accommodate a Mo Salah, and I'll be going without him now until I wildcard in game week 31, 32. So I'm pretty well set. Um, have that backup plan and have that idea of triple captaincy this game week if you're not triple captain in this game week think about when you might want to do it some are saying they're not going this week because they're going Solanke in 28 fine if you think Solanke's going to score more points than a Haaland fine um he may well do um some will look at doubles of 34 and 37 and go yeah I'll triple captain then maybe City or Liverpool have a better double then they're probably not going to looking at what the double combinations could be for Man City and Liverpool it's not going to beat the fixtures City and Liverpool have this week. Liverpool have got a trip to Brentford, who have been leaky. Um, they certainly were against Man City a few games ago. Um, conceded three at home. Uh, was it four? Foden hat-trick, wasn't it? Um, and then Liverpool host Luton. That's a big ceiling fixture. Man City, on the other hand, well, they faced Chelsea and Brentford already this season, away from home. Both these fixtures they've got now at home. They conceded seven Four to Chelsea, three to Brentford. Um, sorry, they scored seven. If they can score seven away from home, what are they going to do at home to these two teams? Even if they get another seven, Haaland gets half those goals, right? Um, I really fancy Haaland triple captain this week, guys. I'm going to be doing it. I would need an injury to scare me. Yes, there's some news doing the rounds that Haaland's nan has died and we, we know Haaland's nan has, has passed. Very sad. Does that mean he misses the game? I don't think so. She passed away before the Copenhagen fixture. And yes, the funeral is closer to uh, the Premier League fixtures. I still can't see him missing a game. Um, watch this space. I'm sure we'll get a little bit more news about that. And we'll have training ground photos and we'll know more about Haaland. Pep will probably be asked about it in the press conference on Friday. But as things stand, unless we get breaking news around an injury or him being absent, Haaland is my triple captain this game week. And if he wasn't, would I still triple captain someone else this game week? Or would I hold for Solanke in 28 or someone else in 34, 37? I'd probably still go this game week on a De Bruyne or on a Darwin. I think I would. But look, I'm 99.9% .9 it will be on Haaland. And I'm pretty happy with that. Guys, I've got a couple of stats to show you about Haaland, by the way. Now, obviously, Haaland's the best player in the game. Obviously, Haaland's got two good fixtures. But he's only played two Premier League games since he was out for a while. Now, when Haaland is fit, 
he gets all the minutes. You haven't got to worry about rotation and pep roulette with Haaland. When he's fit, he plays. And when he came back against Brentford, I was like, maybe he'll get an hour. He got 86 minutes. Then the next game against Everton, I was like, oh, they've got Copenhagen coming up. Maybe he'll get another, get an hour. Nope, he got 90. And then Copenhagen comes round. And City are cruising. Second half, does he come off? No, he gets 90. This is a minutes monster. Doesn't have to do a huge amount of work off the ball. Um, doesn't run a massive amount. And he's so, so fit. Harlan will get, I think, there's a good chance he gets 180 minutes over the double game week, which you can't say for Liverpool attackers and you can't say for other Man City attackers, really. You know, I'm not even confident Foden and De Bruyne are going to get 180. But I think I am with Haaland. And the stats there for Haaland in the two games that he's been back for Man City in the Premier League, amongst other forwards, who's had the most attempts? All the forwards in the game in the last two game weeks, joint first, Haaland. Shots inside the box, joint first, Haaland. Penalty area touches, he's joint second. Uh, goals, well, he scored a couple, uh, he's joint second. Expected goals, he ranks third. The numbers for Haaland in just the two games against Brentford and Everton have showed huge signs of promise. In a way, I wish he didn't score against Everton. I mean, I take that back because I captained him against Everton. But in a way, if he hadn't have scored against Everton, I'd expect his ownership to be lower this game week. I wouldn't expect many to want to triple captain him because they'd be like, oh, he's not scored in the two games. But whether he scored against Everton or not, He's still the best option, I think, this game week. So look, I, oft I don't often tell you who to captain. I don't often like to tell you when to use chips. Absolutely don't. And by the way, I've got a chip strategy video. Some different strategies there. Go and find it. Uh, that dropped a couple of days on this YouTube channel. It's one of the best videos I think I've made. So please do check out the chip strategy video for more. Um, but triple captain this week is absolutely the one for me. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Do like and subscribe. Please do take the time to hit those buttons. And if you're subscribing, hit the bell. So then when I go live, you know. Um, good luck this game week. I'm going to try and do a live on Friday um, afternoon. And then Saturday morning, no deadline stream because I'm on Sky Sports News. Guys, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you on the other side. Bye-bye.